good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you're watching this from um, Gibson is right back with Moogie Talks. And today with me is uh, someone who has been so off the grid, just like the podcast. So yeah, joining me on set is uh, Sean May. Right before you got on set, uh, you were watching uh, Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime show. Um, you say it's, it's if, if it's how many views, then you've contributed uh, with percentage? Yeah, 100 million views. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shona, once again, welcome to the Moggy Talks podcast. Um, Thank you. We missed you musically. I don't know, but I surely did. Um, how have you been? I've been good. I've been uh, away doing, you know, what I need to do when it comes to balancing life and uh, I figured that to balance life, I needed to sit down and strategize and see what needed my energy the most. And at the moment, school needed my energy. And uh, right now, I'm back, and uh, better since school is done. And yeah, it's time for the music and uh, to make a consistency look throughout the year. Okay. Um, I did attend your listening party for After the Pain. It must have been October 2020. So it makes three years in a few months from now. I remember one on Twitter, uh, I think your former manager, he once made a joke saying, all it took was you receiving one blue tick from your girlfriend, and uh, you then wrote that whole five-track painful project. Yeah. So what was uh, the, what's the real story behind it? The real story uh, comes from a relationship, you know, just pain, like heartbreak after the pain. And uh, that was uh, written best of emotions. I went through you know dealing with my first real heartbreak and uh, yeah that's how after the pain came about every song on there was just a story so it was based on a true story it was strictly better every song i've uh, done is based on a true story so mm. yeah okay uh we all know you as sean main yeah. but your name is sean Misan. so how did you get to sean main uh i used to be before i did music i used to be so, for lack of a better word, social media savvy, and uh, I liked being on social media. My name at the time was at I Am The Mainest, because my sister used to call me that. And when I wanted to do music, I didn't want to have my real name out there, uh, the song, because I wanted uh, that to be a separate, you know, mm-hmm. life. And mm-hmm. I chose main from I Am The Mainest, and that's how, uh, you know, show me came about. Mm-hmm. And you did mention that uh, all that school is done, it's time to focus on doing what you do best, which is creating music. Yeah. Um, so, what's your ideal time of creation? Are you more of a morning person or you work better in the evenings? I want everyone that knows that I record with at least knows I work better off. Every after 6 pm, you're 6 pm to 6 am, I'm lively, I'm awake. But before 6 pm, um, yeah, I'm out. So, you say between 6 pm and 6 am is when you are full in your elements to create yeah. music. So out of studio, who is Sean Main? Like, what kind of person can someone expect to find when they find you out of studio? In um, terms of activities? Out of studio, I do a lot of cooking. I do a lot of uh, watching series. <laughs> and uh, I'm not uh, an extrovert or that's out there. I'm a very reserved and shy person, so I'm usually home, eating or out with friends, you know, just living life. Mm-hmm. You mentioned uh, when you're not in the studio, you're chilling with friends and watching. What shows have you been watching of late? The Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, the Walking Dead and uh, Elite, as well as Secure and Devil in Secure as well. Ah, Elite. Uh, I loved Elite. It was a very, very beautiful story. The whole, it's, I think it was Spanish. And, yeah. uh, I feel like watching with the subtitles, it puts you on tension, but it's looking very interesting. Yeah. and engage. Um, how did you, uh, you said your sister gave you your name because she used to call you Mainest and uh, that's how you came about with Shaman. But what moment was it for you to discover that uh, you could actually create music? Um, <coughs> there were different moments obviously, like I can't pin down on one, but the one, the funniest memory I have is when I was uh, six, around six or around that age. And uh, I'd be home, I'm the last one of seven, okay. grown up people, you know. <laughs> so I was, I didn't grow up with the typical way that people in my generation did, like mm-hmm. in terms of watching 
Disney and all that because mm. by the time I was in that stage, all my siblings were like adolescent, so mm. was, they more they gravitated more to like music. So mm. there was a lot of Fifty Cent, Jill Scott, uh, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder playing in the house. So I gravitated to music more, and uh, that's where my love for music started coming from. But in terms of creation, I think it was um, in uh, high school. That's when. I figured uh, I had uh, you know that gift to see. Like I knew I could see, but like I didn't so that serious. Yeah. So yeah. So was I, was there like one time where maybe pain pointed out? You say I'll be in class. They're like maybe uh, the teacher is like we need someone to do this. And I was like sure, uh, sure. Was it? I did uh, choir at one point, like because everyone needed to be in choir. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we had a music teacher who made people individually sing. So he came to me and uh, made me sing and discovered, oh, I had uh, an alto, we called it then, you know, to sing. So I used to lead the alto segment, you know, the alto group. Yeah, Mm -hmm. then later on I started doing solos and uh, when I switched schools, I went to another school. Uh, A few people there noticed I could sing because, you know, there's no way my mouth used to be shut. I talk a lot, you know, so... (laughs) I talk and sing a lot, so mm. once they discovered that, they started doing a lot mm. of assemblies and stuff like that, mm. and the love just kept on growing. Uh, your song ran. Um, I think I was among um, the few people who actually thought, for once, you, you mentioned that Luganda thing. You know that Bambi Run? Run, Bambi Run. You can't run, but you cannot hide from me. But you cannot hide from me. Yeah. Until I think we had a conversation. And uh, you corrected me that Bambi was actually a character you were singing about in that song, right? So um, I do wonder, um, do you at some point think you're going to give us a little look or something? Right now, I'm not in the space of uh, saying I will, but I know definitely that I will come. But like right now, and uh, from this new EP or what we're going to talk about later, there's no Luganda or any other type of vernacular in terms of the Kinyaranda and all that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I think of, I don't speak the languages very, I speak them very well, but I don't sing them as naturally as I thought I would. And I want it to be organic, so when that time comes, you know. And there's a lot of people doing incredible stuff in Luganda, so. You are too. No, I don't want to mess it up, <laughs> per se, but I, don't, I just don't want to compete with people that are doing it. So yeah, people so are good at what they are doing. Yeah, I'm doing what I can do. So they stay in your space? Uh, my parents. They, right they, 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 uh, they <laughs> take you in the bears. Um, you've mentioned that um, you've just finished um, with school and I understand you're doing a bachelor's in uh, marketing. Um, what uh, what was your favorite or fondest memory of the entire three-year journey? No, finishing. Sorry, finishing. <laughs> finishing was my... Uh, favorite uh, moment yeah, right now just, I'm still in the process of finishing but uh, yeah that was getting out point. was because most times they say it's not about the destination rather the journey that's why I feel there'll be like so many memories and moments you look back on and say you had one and this one you look like um, I've never been a school person so <laughs> we're quite a I want to say <laughs> Oh, I used to go out and uh, sit with my friends after class. Now I was never that type of person. I just wanted to get it done with you. So, yeah. Um, brands and uh, style fashion awards, uh, sometimes it feels like those guys are like family to you. I mean, you made your debut um, as a person who was just attending. Then uh, in uh, the 2022 edition, uh, you performed uh, Lift Me Up. Um, one, there's something about how you always present yourself in terms of fashion. Like, it's so incredible. Um, who, is it you styles yourself or you have a designer or it's your sister or parents? Who picks out your outfits? Uh, I do style myself. Before I loved music. No, I've always loved music. But before I took music seriously, <laughs> I did fashion seriously. And uh, yeah, it's, I communicate more in terms of like my feelings through the way I dress or the way I see them. Yeah, fashion is uh, something that's very important to me. I do all that myself. I have a few people on the side who like uh, include styling, like top stylists is a stylist I work with right now. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a thing of uh, we work together, but it's never someone dictating what I wear. 
I think it's so important like the fact that you dress, know that's true to yourself. You don't have to compromise or feel comfortable but like just being yourself, like even if it's just through the music, the fashion, you are hundred percent authentic, which I think is really beautiful. Um, yeah, you performed at the Asfas, um, you performed at Blackets and Wine, I think Jidena, the edition at Jidena, you performed at the One Song concert. So, which stage um, are you most um, looking forward to performing on Sunday? Um, there are very many stages, I don't want to jinx them, mm. but uh, the one <coughs> I want to be on uh, for sure is uh, the Super Bowl stage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a uh, manifest, hard manifest, manifest. It's, manifest. Uh, you know. Mm. A dream, but the journey there is not the easiest journey. So having that as my dream stage helps me do as much as I can to get over these other stages like Coachella and stuff like that. Those, you know, small hurdles and goals that people do before they get to the most stage. But yeah, that's uh, so my dream that stage. Time. Yeah. Um, did mention that um, you want to try out with the local language in Uganda because there is really people. Who are doing it and they're doing it so good. Um, sometimes I do feel maybe that kind of thing slows your breakthrough time. Because ideally, um, most times uh, people's breakthrough or um, consideration of a successful musical career is with a hit song. So um, at some point, have you found yourself maybe um, going through um, going through a stage or phase where you feel like, you know what? I think maybe music is not for me and I'm just done with it. I've gone through the stage of uh, wanting to quit because of people not appreciating the music or saying, uh, you don't sing Uganda, so we don't want to listen to you. Mm-hmm. But I think every artist has gone through the stage of, is this what it is? And uh, I've been there before, but it's mm-hmm. because of other things like um, unfairness in the industry because people get keep like uh, they hold you back because of selfish gain on their end because they want to keep all the shine all the glory to mm. a specific type of audience a specific type of uh, people so obviously it uh, makes the journey twice as hard but uh, once you find your people once you find your path and your audience it's always got a uh, because that's what I was getting to. Um, how did you bounce back from that thought, that feeling, that um, that time? Um, I think it's uh, knowing not everyone is going to appreciate, understanding not everyone is going to appreciate what you do, the way you think they, they will, and understanding that not everyone has pure intentions, you know? Mm. So nothing is ever that personal. It's personal, but uh, it shouldn't be personal to the level of them taking away something that means a lot to you. So you always just have to snap back and uh, do what you do with the people that appreciate and uh, goes a long way. Also praying to God, you know. Most important. So because uh, yeah, because they keep saying of oh, it's also something also believe in God is the realest G. It's always there. Um so you've been actively doing this for about three and a half to four years. Yeah. What do you think has been? Oh, you've experienced all you say is the hardest part of being an artist? Um, the hardest part of being an artist is um, uh, I can't think of much right now, but um, creating stuff that you think people are going to use on it too in the way that uh, you do, but in the end they don't, you know, mm. I'll receive it uh, the same, in the same. Um, Thinking that in the same thoughts, with the same thought process, with the same love that you had making it, and uh, like I said earlier, nothing is ever possible. So you're creating for different audiences and whatnot. But um, also the gatekeepers and all that. It's the, like, it like you said, it makes the journey times too hard. Yeah, but like other than that, I don't think there's anything that's been so crazy about the music. And at the start of our conversation, we did mention that. For the third time, guys, Sean is officially back. Um, so that means we are expecting new music. Mm-hmm. Not just new music, but a whole big project. Yeah. So tell us about the forthcoming product, whatever you've been cooking. Um, 
when I took my time off, I did not entirely close off that door of music. I kept creating over time, I kept recording and uh, just kept putting it out. And we came up with a whole lot of songs which we picked out and planned for for this time when I come back and hopefully, you know, bring the consistency and the times than ever before. And uh, with this comeback, we chose to have an EP called When the Sun Sets, mm. and it's a four track EP <coughs> that deals with the different uh, stages of heartbreak. Four stages, which is hunger, depression, acceptance, and uh, by gaining as well. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just something that's a pure experience of mine, a real experience, it's something I've gone through, and uh, it's a follow up to from my EP. After the pain, yeah. So, the sun. yeah so. so you say that when the sun sets has four tracks. So this is four tracks from how many, like how many did you have in um, originally for you to turn down to select? And uh, what was the criteria you followed to select your best four for this project? So I created about 30 songs and uh, from those I picked out like 20. And uh, from those we also picked out a few. And uh, when we sat down and listened to them, a few just didn't sound like they were good comeback songs. And uh, I went back to the studio to create something very personal to me and something real because I did this comeback to me. Something I love. I'm not doing it for the powers, I'm not doing it for anyone else but me. I'm just doing it for people that actually I mean, it's want a story. to listen. Yeah, it's my story and that's mm. to be pleased with what I, you know, what I've done. And uh, yeah, when the census uh, was a perfect uh, peak from those. So it's four beautiful original songs. I've been listening to the project and uh, what's that for me was uh, the trap called The Streams. But uh, what song would you say was your favorite? There's two on uh, the favorite on a different level. Like these dreams was my favorite to it's my favorite because it helped me heal. But recording it was the hardest because I went through a lot just recording it in terms of uh, emotions not accepting. So you uh, 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 occasionally need a competition. Yes, <laughs> uh, it's not even a lie, it's not even a joke. Mm. But, uh, my favorite uh, to record was Risen, but yeah. Then the hardest way to translate it. The hardest to write was. The hardest to write, like. Because the hardest to record was these dreams. Oh, the hardest to write. With writing, I don't. Uh, <laughs> like, without sounding corny or anything, I don't have such like, I have to write it. Yeah, so. Because if I'm writing from the experience, it's always sounds like a story in mind. So it's. Just so, make so my favorite. Or is it when you try to. Say the cook. What's your favorite food to cook? Pasta. Pasta is. Yeah. Yeah, pasta, like pasta is pasta. Ah. <laughs> so it's your favorite to cook, but it's not your favorite meal. It's uh, my favorite meal as well. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so introduce your project to the people and uh, where they can find it. Okay, uh, my new EP, When the Sun Sets, is art. It's a four track EP about stages of heartbreak, and uh, you know, you can find it anywhere. <laughs> four stages? <laughs> yeah, four stages. You can find it. Um, on any streaming platform, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, and uh, you name it. Speaking of uh, the streaming sites, which one is your favorite? Uh, Apple Music. Not Spotify. I don't like the rules. Yeah, Apple Music. I, I think I'm talking about Rihanna, because they, yeah, yeah. they did the, the that as public thing with that. No, like they're doing it for every other artist also mm. after, but it's not about Rihanna. It's, it's uh, about uh, the quality of the music and uh, easy user interface as well and uh, yeah it's and it's also something it's a streaming site that I've, I've grown with you know over time ever since the streaming culture started so uh, lastly uh, I had a like we always do on the Mingi Talks podcast I had a time for you mm. are you ready? better be ready cause <laughs> so three two one um sunny sell seashells by the seashell I won't do that <laughs> thank you but I won't do that 
Alright guys, <laughs> go listen to when the sun sets And it was up a line only that because I just can't. I'm gonna embarrass myself. <laughs> yeah. So guys, uh, do look out for when the sun sets whenever it is out. Uh, go follow Sean Main on all social media. Subscribe, share with a friend and do let me know what you think of the show. Thank you.